In the philosophical discourse of modernity, J. Rujan Habermas presents a comprehensive critique of the modern philosophical tradition and the developments that have shaped contemporary thought. The work is rooted in Habermas' larger project of defending modernity and the Enlightenment's ideals of reason, autonomy, and democracy against postmodern critiques that question or reject these principles. The text offers an exploration of key figures in modern philosophy, from Hegel to Nietzsche, through to Heidegger, Derrida, and Foucault, as Habermas evaluates their contributions and their limitations in understanding the challenges posed by modernity. At the heart of the philosophical discourse of modernity is Habermas' argument that modernity represents an unfinished project, one that still holds emancipatory potential through the application of reason and communicative action. Habermas defends the Enlightenment's commitment to rationality, seeing it as essential for democratic discourse and social progress. However, he is also critical of the way certain philosophical movements, particularly those associated with postmodernism, have sought to undermine the project of modernity by rejecting its core values. For Habermas, the turn toward relativism, irrationalism, or skepticism in postmodern thought threatens to erode the foundation for social justice, democracy, and shared ethical norms. One of the central concerns of the book is the way modernity has been understood and critiqued by key philosophers. Habermas traces the development of modernity's philosophical discourse back to Hegel, whom he considers fundative in understanding the dialectical nature of modernity. Hegel's philosophy, with its focus on the development of self-consciousness and the unfolding of historical reason, serves as a key point of departure for much of modern thought. Habermas sees in Hegel's work a model for understanding the rational potential of modernity, its capacity for self-reflection and development through reason, dialogue and critique. However, Habermas also acknowledges the limits of Hegelian thought, particularly in its idealism and the way it seems to close off the possibilities for further critical engagement. One history is viewed as having reached its rational conclusion. The critique of Hegel leads Habermas to consider the work of thinkers like Marx, Nietzsche, and Heidegger, who represent significant challenges to the optimistic view of modernity as a rational and progressive project. These thinkers, in different ways, point to the limits of reason the darker side of modernity, and the ways in which power, domination, and irrationality persist within modern societies. Marx's critique of capitalism and the role of ideology, for example, represents a challenge to the Enlightenment's faith in rational progress. For Marx, the economic structures of capitalism undermine the possibility of genuine freedom and rational discourse by entrenching social inequalities and alienation. While Habermas acknowledges the importance of Marx's analysis of economic power and domination, he is critical of Marxism's tendency toward determinism and its failure to develop a viable framework for democratic dialogue an ethical normativity. Nietzsche presents an even more radical critique of modernity, rejecting the Enlightenment's emphasis on reason, truth, and morality. Nietzsche's philosophy of the will to power and his deconstruction of traditional values represent a fundamental challenge to the Enlightenment project. Habermas views Nietzsche as a key figure 
in the genealogy of postmodern thought, which seeks to dismantle the idea of objective truth and universal reason, while Nietzsche's critique of modernity exposes the illusions of progress and rationality. Habermas is concerned that Nietzsche's rejection of these ideals leads to nihilism and an abandonment of the possibility for critical social engagement. Following Nietzsche, Heidegger's existential and phenomenological approach represents another significant break with the Enlightenment tradition. Heidegger's critique of technology, his focus on being, and his rejection of modern metaphysics all reflect a deep skepticism toward the modern project. Habermas, while recognizing the philosophical depth of Heidegger's work, is critical of his turn away from reason and communicative action. For Habermas, Heidegger's critique of modernity leads to a retreat into a form of ontological thinking that fails to offer a viable alternative for democratic politics or ethical reasoning. In contrast to these figures, Habermas proposes an alternative vision of modernity, one that is grounded in communicative reason rather than instrumental or purely strategic rationality. Drawing on the insights of pragmatism and critical theory, Habermas argues that the emancipatory potential of modernity lies in its capacity for rational discourse and collective problem solving. He defends the idea that modernity can still fulfill its promise through the development of democratic institutions that allow for open and inclusive communication. For Habermas, rationality is not simply a tool for controlling the world, as critics like Adorno and Horkheimer feared, but a means for achieving understanding and cooperation among individuals and communities. A significant portion of the book is dedicated to Habermas' engagement with the work of French post-structuralists particularly Michel Foucault and Jacques Derrida. These thinkers represent the culmination of the postmodern critique of modernity, with their focus on power relations, deconstruction, and the limits of language. Faust's genealogical method, which traces the historical construction of knowledge and power, offers a powerful critique of the Enlightenment s claim to universal reason, Foucault's analysis of how modern institutions such as prisons, hospitals, and schools operate through subtle mechanisms of power and control, reveals the dark undercurrents of modernity that had been overlooked by previous thinkers. However, Habermas is critical of Foucault's rejection of the possibility of rational critique. Foucault's insistence that all forms of knowledge are entangled with power leads to a form of skepticism that for Habermas undermines the possibility of resistance or emancipation. Without the ability to appeal to universal norms or rational argumentation, Foucault's critique risks collapsing into relativism. Habermas contends that while Foucault's insights into the workings of power are valuable, they must be complemented by a theory of communicative action that allows for the possibility of rational critique and democratic deliberation. Similarly, Habermas takes issue with Derrida's deconstructive approach, which challenges the notion of fixed meanings and stable identities. While Derrida's critique of logocentrism, the idea that language can capture objective truth, is an important contribution to postmodern thought, Habermas argues that deconstruction leaves us with no stable ground for social critique or ethical judgment. For Habermas, Derrida's focus on the indeterminacy of language 
and meaning ultimately leads to a form of linguistic relativism that is incompatible with the needs of democratic discourse. In response to these critiques, Habermas advocates for a form of discourse ethics that can preserve the Enlightenment's commitment to reason and autonomy while addressing the valid concerns raised by postmodern thinkers. His theory of communicative action offers a way to reconcile the demands of modernity with the challenges posed by pluralism, power, and difference by grounding ethics and politics in the process of rational communication rather than in abstract principles or metaphysical claims. Habermas seeks to offer a more flexible and inclusive framework for understanding modernity.